What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about two trades that I made today, on the 1st of April in 2019, we're also going to be talking about degas and natural gas, a potential trade that I'm looking to make there, as well as some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here starting off the month of April in 2019. But before we do get into this, guys, all I ask for everybody out there watching, if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really does support me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to go down below as well to the description box. I have two links for you, both 100% free, one being our Discord group chat and the second one being our free Facebook group. There's a ton of value in there for everybody out there that's into investing, trading, the stock market, personal finance, entrepreneurship, all these different things. You will find a ton of value in there. So without further ado, let's just talk about what ended up happening today in the overall markets here, starting off with the SPX, also known as the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this, especially if you were keeping up with the futures and the market today. Well, the market was on absolute fire. The S&P up nearly 33 points up about 1.16% at the close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 1.3%, up 330 points at the close today. And the NASDAQ Composite, this is the future, guys. It did not close minus five points. But if we go over here to the one day, one minute, we can see how crazy of a day that the NASDAQ did have today, right? It opened up nearly at about 74.69. We ended up going down to about 74.55 and ran up all the way to about 7,500. Up, I believe it was up around 1.2, 1.3% at the close near the high of um, the day here. So absolutely insane day today in the overall markets. And honestly, guys, if we're going to the S&P 500 here, we ended up gapping up nearly 20 to 22 points at the open. And from there, we only fluctuated about 10 to maybe 8 to 12 points from where we opened up to where we ended up closing, which is pretty, pretty solid of a move here. So just to talk about some technicals very quickly on the S&P 500, we bounced on the 50 simple moving average here a couple of days ago, which was the support that me and a bunch of people in our community and a bunch of other investors and traders out there was looking at the support level to see whether or not we were going to break below it to maybe start a bearish trend down to this level, or were we going to bounce above it to continue? the uptrend. And obviously now that we see what happened, we have the data, we bounced, we're uptrending again, well rather we're continuing the uptrend and now we're fiddling with the 25 or 2860 level. And quite frankly, we broke that level of resistance, which is honestly the main resistance that I was watching heading into the market this week. So for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday on Sunday, we were talking about how this was going to be a major spot for the S&P 500. And the fact that we bursted through that now gives me the, uh, the thought really that we're going to hold this level level or we're possibly going to hold this level as a new support and then continue on the uptrend. Another thing that I'm personally um, waiting for right now and that's in the back of my head is, you know, if we pop up again tomorrow, let's say, that's going to put the RSI on the S&P at an overbought level, right? And for those of you guys that don't know what the RSI is, I mentioned this in yesterday's video. I uploaded a more in-detail video about the RSI. RSI, also known as the Relative Strength Index. So go check that out after this video. But just the gist of what it is, is pretty much whenever this line is getting up to the 70 bar, this yellow bar here, that means the index, the stock, the future, the ETF is approaching overbought status. And obviously when it's getting down here to the 30 threshold, that means it's getting 
oversold. So now that we're getting a bit overbought, we pushed up to a higher high at this point. If we have another green day, we're going to get even more overbought. We're going to extend up to an even higher level here. And in my opinion, at that point, we're going to most likely pull back like we have done every time that we push to a higher high here over the past couple of weeks in the S&P 500. So somebody actually commented on my video, I believe Sunday or Saturday, the previous couple of days, and they said how they think personally, they thought that the market was going to push up Monday, Tuesday this week, and then potentially plateau on Wednesday into a pullback on Thursday and Friday. And this is something that I honestly think is very possible. Again, if we had a green day tomorrow, let's say we pumped up to, let's say, for uh, hypothetically here to 2875, let's say we were roughly here, we plateaued there like we did the previous times that we pushed to a higher high, maybe for two, three days. I would really honestly think we would be pulling back from there to at least maybe back down to 2830, maybe 2820, maybe back down to these levels again to bring that RSI down a bit. And at that point, people are just going to be selling the short term money, the traders, they're going to be taking their profits at that point, pushing down the overall index. So in terms of the S&P, guys, you know, really briefly here, it's uptrending. We're continuing the uptrend. And honestly, the technicals are pointing to more green here. So let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think? You know, do you think we're going to push up again one more day than maybe plateau into a sell-off? Or do you think we're going to run up maybe two, three more days in the S&P 500? So for fun, let's just take a look and see how far are we from all-time highs at this point, we're about 2.36%, give or take, from all-time highs. So let's say we had a couple green days in a row here, strong green days. We're going to be there in no time, which absolutely blows my mind, guys, because two, three months ago, if you were to tell me that in two, three months from now, we're going to be at all-time highs again, I would have slapped you across the face and called you silly, right? But the fact that we're there now, again, absolutely blows my mind. So let's just go over here now to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which honestly is looking very, very good right now on a technical basis. So let me just quickly erase these um, drawings because they do seem a bit sloppy here. We'll go over here to uh, my support lines here so we can draw out some very quickly so we can get a better understanding of what is going on right now in terms of the Dow. So just take a look at three uh, at these three lines here, right? We can see we ended up holding this old resistance as a new support a couple of days ago, which was at about $25,500. We ended up breaking above the 50 simple moving average resistance, ended up breaking above the $26,000 level of resistance here from back back in towards the end, maybe middle of March of 2019. We gapped up heavily today, which honestly is what broke us above that resistance today, actually, is when we did, uh, when we did rather break that resistance. And now, just like the S&P was fiddling with its resistance at about 2860, now the Dow is fiddling with its resistance at about 26,200, which is, is, is a resistance level that we've been talking about here on the channel over the past couple of weeks. So very brief here, guys, just, make, just pay attention to this level, right? Because this level is a spot where we got rejected at once back in the beginning of November of 2018, in the middle towards Towards the end of February in 2019, and this, maybe it's going to be another rejection spot, or we're going to end up breaking above it, maintaining it as a new support, and then slowly push up to the next resistance, which in this case is going to be around another 100 points above from where we are now, nearly at about 26400 more like $26,370. And from there, if we break that, guys, you know, we have a full head of steam up to the all-time highs near 27000 Well, actually, no, that's not true. We have another resistance at about, what's this level, like 26750 And from there, if we were to break that level, full head of steam up to the all-time highs. So let's just see for fun here, how far are we from all-time highs here in the Dow Jones? Pretty much the same level as the S&P, right? Around 23 to 2.6% away 
from the all-time highs here. Very, very close, guys. And again, a couple of green days away. Uh, rather, a couple of green days will get us to that level, which again, absolutely blows my mind. So just keep an eye on those levels for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And let's take a look here at the NASDAQ. So I feel like every single one of these indexes is at a level of resistance right now. The S&P, the level we talked about, the Dow, we just talked about it. And the NASDAQ here is at that 7,500-ish level of resistance from where we popped up back towards the end of uh, March of 2019. We can see this crazy run up. I know a lot of you guys remember this when we pulled down to the 180 SMA. We touched that. We pretty much kissed right off of it. And from 6,900, we ran all the way up to $7,500. We pulled back. We had that little correction. We double bottom there on the 72 to $7,300 level of support. Double bottom. And now we popped up. We broke the resistance at about $7,370 to $7,400. And if we zoom in a bit, I believe we broke that level today. Actually, no, I'm wrong. That was on the 29th of March, a couple of days ago. That might have been Thursday or Friday. We broke up and then we ended up gapping up this morning. And now, tomorrow, the same exact thing as the Dow Jones and the S&P, right? Well, actually, the S&P is already maintaining that new level of support. But just like the Dow, I want to see, are we going to break this level of resistance and maintain it as a new support before we slowly start to get to all-time highs again? This is something that I'm waiting for in terms of the NASDAQ. But again, be a bit cautious here, guys, because the RSI, again, on every single one of these indexes is a bit overbought. But like I said in that RSI video, I'm going to say it again here, don't just strictly rely on one indicator when you're making your decisions about anything you're doing your technical analysis on, right? You need to uh you know, you need to really use a bunch of different indicators in unison to make your decisions, right? And by that I mean, you know, maybe you use the RSI in unison with the MACD and, you know, maybe a bullish cross on the moving averages, for example, right? That would be three indicators to make a decision, right? Don't just base your decision on one indicator. So, that's pretty much the gist of it here, guys. Very simple, not too much to say. I don't want to spend too much time on this today, but just keep an eye on this level, 7,500. Again, we pop above there. We hold it as a new support. Up to the all-time highs, we're at about 2.4% off, which again is in the same ballpark as the NASDAQ, or rather the uh, Dow and the S&P. So that is the overall market update for today. Ins insanely good day, insanely good day. Um, today guys but just be careful again the markets are getting to those points uh those levels of being a bit overextended being a bit overbought so if we did have a pullback later on this week you know i honestly would not be surprised so that is you know the uh the uh, what's it called the market update for today now let's talk about very quickly what I ended up trading today. So the first trade I actually made was in JNUG. And I'm sure a lot of you all know by now, JNUG got absolutely crushed today. So I ended up taking a little loss there on JNUG for my first trade of the day. But I actually rebounded pretty nicely by adding a small swing position on Apple and doing pretty well on my swing position on NVIDIA. But just to quickly talk about gold right now, Gold, you know, I thought this morning, really, I was watching this level of support at around 1295 to 1296 this morning, and it seemed like we were holding it pretty nicely here, and we popped up here. And I'm, at that point, I was thinking, okay, this could be a level of, uh, um, you know, uh, return, not return, um, a level, a double bottom level where we could see a bullish run here on gold, right? So I pretty much jumped the gun on JNUG. And if you guys don't know, JNUG is actually a bull ETF that trades 
on gold. So this one really, it was it was just a bad trade on my part, to be honest, guys. You know, I went kind of against my rules here. I'm being completely transparent and honest, and it really just didn't go, uh, you know, the way I wanted it to go, right? We saw that gold was really just downtrending the entire day, but the fact that we were just hovering around that support, you know, in terms of gold, again, gold, when it goes up, JNL goes up. I just wanted to add a little bit of, of a position there to see whether or not it was going to bounce and recover and the short story uh to make a long story short it didn't right it did not i ended up taking a little bit of a loss there on jnug it was about a 1.2 percent loss i had a mental stop loss on this one guys again a mental stop loss is when you don't actually set a stop loss in your account you just have discipline, and you cut your losses at a certain spot, right? And this is something that I don't recommend for beginner traders out there, right? Because beginner traders, they're mostly, you know, trading with their emotions. They're very emotional. If a stock goes down, and let's say they wanted to set a mental stop loss, a lot of the times they just get rid of that plan. They don't give a crap about it anymore and they just hold it and end up losing more money, right? So if you're a beginner, just use stop losses, right? But if you're a person that has discipline, you're more of a seasoned trader, right? You can use mental stop losses to your advantage. And that's what I did today, guys. Completely transparent. I took a little bit of a loss there on JNUG, but no big deal because for those of you guys that have been watching the channel, I'm swing trading NVIDIA, which I got in at about 176.20 a couple of days ago. And I also built a position today in Apple on the dip that we saw. AAPL. I always, whenever I do Apple, guys, uh, the ticker, I always try to do APL, APPL, even though I know the ticker is AAPL. But sometimes I just mess that up. I know a lot of you guys probably relate. But in terms of Apple, I got in on this big dip that we saw at the beginning of the market, right? We gapped up actually pretty aggressively from the close at 189 up to 192. And then we saw that big sell off. And you guys know. Me personally, I love seeing, you know, a tri uh, a stock that's gapping up pre-market, right? And it sells off aggressively, opening up that margin. And I love seeing it slowly starting to fill that gap. And that's pretty much, <coughs> excuse me, what I ended up seeing in Apple. And that is why I built a little position there in Apple, right? And this is one that I talked about in my video yesterday. I talked about it in my morning video today. And yes, I do upload morning videos every single day that I can, right? Some days I can't do it, but some days I can. And today was one of the, those days that I did upload one. And I talked about Apple in today's video. And if we just hop back to the 184 hour, the reason why I like Apple as a swing trade, guys, is because we pulled back from the 195 resistance here. We bounced on the 180 five support and we've been maintaining the 50 simple moving average as a support level as well riding it up over the past couple of days and the pullback that we saw today really bounced on top of the 50 simple moving average we briefly did break below it but once i saw a recovery and it holding above that moving average right and it holding this trend that we see right here you know that really gave me incentive to add a little bit of money into Apple, roughly at about 189.10, I believe is where my position is right now. And I'm up a little bit, like about 1%, 2% right now. Nothing crazy. Actually, no, not 2%, uh, a little bit less than that, I think. Let me show you guys very quickly. So from 189.10, roughly where I got in up to where I am now, yeah, it's definitely not 2%. It's more like 1% up on my position here. And my goal to sell Apple is at about a hundred and ninety five dollars and from there once we do if we hit that level i want to sell my shares and wait to see are we going to pop above 195 maintain that as a new support before potentially adding or rather building another position in apple up to the next resistance at about two hundred dollars per share so that's what i'm doing 
you know, in terms of Apple. And that's honestly all I ended up trading today, guys, right? A lot of the movement in the market, like I said, was pre-market movement, right? The futures were up like crazy yesterday. We gapped up 20, 22 points in the SPX at the open. And from there, we only fluctuated again, like I said, 8 to 12 points. So, you know, if you weren't in a trade from Friday or if you didn't get in pre-market hours or whatever, you know, there weren't not to say that there weren't a lot of moves. There obviously were a lot of moves, but if you were to hold from Friday, is what I'm saying here, you would have been more, uh, you know, more well off than if you were to buy this morning, is what I'm trying to say here, right? So, in terms of what I traded, that is what it was, right? So, another thing. I wanted to talk about in this video, and you saw it in the title, was a potential trade in DGAS. And DGAS was another one that I actually talked about in my morning video today. And let me show you guys what I was saying this morning. So for those of you guys that don't know, DGAS is actually a future, or not a future, an ETF that trades on the natural gas futures, meaning whenever natural gas is going up in price, DGAS is going down, right? But when natural gas is going down, DGAS is going up. So we see a pretty big move here. And I talked about this in this morning's video for those of you guys that recalled and yesterday's video, right? I was talking about how a good entry point in DGAS in my eyes was going to be if we were to push up here push up a natural gas would obviously open up margin on DGAS and then get rejected at a higher low and then start to push to a lower low, right? Pretty much just continuing the downtrend. And what do we see here after market hours and what formed, you know, throughout the day today is exactly that, right? We're starting to get rejected, not by the 50 SMA, like I did say in this morning's video, but we're getting rejected by the 180 SMA resistance, which is still a lower high from the previous. And now we're looking to push to a lower low. But the thing now I want to see is whether or not we're going to break this 50 simple moving average support now to start to push to that lower low. Actually, we've already started to push to the lower low, but I want to see a significant break this way for us to get further confirmation that we are pushing back into the 260s. And if that happens tomorrow, guys, pre-market hours, whatever, that's going to be huge in my eyes for DGAS. So DGAS is definitely the number one uh, you know, stock ETF, whatever you want to call it. It's an ETF that I'm watching tomorrow, right? So let me just pull up DGAS's chart very quickly to see what I'm talking about here on a further basis and to see the recovery that we're seeing and really the continuation of the uptrend here, right? So we saw, like I mentioned in this morning's video, we got the pullback or rather the push up in natural gas, which opened up the margin on DGAS. Take a look at that from 109 I think it honestly hit $100 flat today, guys, like exactly. No, $100.11, but close enough, right? But we got the pullback, like I said, and now we're starting to see a nice reversal on the one day, one minute. We found the bottom. We started to make higher highs here, higher lows. We're seeing the bullish cross. We're seeing the EMA break above the 180 SMA, the EMA breaking above the 50 SMA, the 50 SMA breaking above the 180 SMA. All of these are moving average bullish crossovers and this is really looking attractive to me uh, right now, guys. So tomorrow, if we do maintain this level, 103, 104, I think that's going to be a good entry point up to 109, which offers about 4%. And of course, if we continue the uptrend, if natural gas pushes pushes to a lower low, that is going to be a huge, huge opportunity in my personal opinion. So that's the number one I'm watching tomorrow. Apple's another one I'm watching, but I kind of already broke that one down, so I don't want to break it down again. And Tesla, guys, Tesla's one that did very, very well today. Very, very well. And if you guys watched my video from a week or two ago, it's called like Tesla to 290. It's, it, it's insane, but I honestly kind of called this one out, right? I kind of called this one out a couple of weeks. Now, it was more like a week or two ago. You guys can go check it out. But I was telling you how 
if we were to break the 50 simple moving average, which we did, this resistance level, we were most likely on a technical basis here going to push up to the 180 SMA, pretty much trade between the moving averages, and that's exactly what ended up happening guys absolutely crazy here so now what i'm looking for in terms of tesla is are we going to end up getting rejected here which has been a resistance over the past couple of months you really can't deny it right Re rejection here rejection 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 now we're overbought and at this point of resistance this could be another rejection zone for tesla at least a little pullback zone in terms of tesla maybe back down to 280 bringing down that rsi this could really happen but let's say we see a very bullish move Move tomorrow again the RSI doesn't always tell us that a stock's going to pull back if it's overbought let's say we break out of this 180 SMA resistance we break out of this downwards trending line here who knows guys we could be pushing a 300 in terms of Tesla which is going to be absolutely crazy and another thing to note here is we're actually at another resistance from back in um what was this? The middle of March in 2019. And if we were to break this res uh, resistance, that would actually be another big uh, resistance break, another big bullish move for Tesla. So just keep an eye on Tesla. And let's hop over here to this article very quickly that actually one of our Discord members uh, ended up pointing out in the chat today. So thank you, thank you for pointing this one out. And this is really just showing us the, you know, the, uh, what's it called? The, um, the uh, numbers here in Europe for Tesla models. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's just take a look at how Tesla's doing over here uh, with their delivery models in uh, their Model 3s over here in, uh, what's it called, Europe. So Tesla delivering over 5,000 Model 3 vehicles in Norway, a smaller Austrian market, about 752 deliveries in March here. Let's see, let's go down here a bit more. I don't know why Elon actually changed his Twitter. I didn't see this to Jung Musk. I don't know why he changed it to that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Is this, I don't know. I really don't know what to say about that. But, um, you know, all these deliveries are just still representing about half of the 15,000 Model 3 orders that Tesla received in Europe for the first two versions of the vehicle. I swear there was a couple of more countries here in this article. But nonetheless, guys, you know, they're starting to bring out Model 3s in Europe. They're, they're entering into new markets here. So this could be, due to the good delivery numbers that we are seeing, you know, why Tesla has been killing it today in the past couple of days. So what do you guys Guys think about Tesla here I would love to know your opinion so heading into tomorrow guys you know the main ones I'm watching again like I mentioned Apple Tesla I'm gonna be watching of course D gas and Honestly, UWT is one that is super interesting right now for a pullback. So if we do pull back here in UWT and if crude oil does get this pullback that I'm expecting to see due to it being a bit overbought, you know, we could end up entering into DWT tomorrow for potential day trade. Again, if crude oil does end up selling off. And for those of you guys that don't know, DWT goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. So that's a potential play, again, if crude oil does end up selling off. Another one that I'm in is NVIDIA, and NVIDIA is playing out very beautifully right now, right? I got in a couple of days ago, and this one is looking like it wants to hit my exit point, my exit strategy, or really my exit price, which is at about $185. So just keep an eye on NVIDIA. If we get a little pullback, maybe you can get in here. Again, do your own research. Don't just buy because I'm saying it. But let's say, hypothetically, we get a pullback to 180 tomorrow. This could be a decent entry entry back up to 185 which again is the previous resistance and if we do end up continuing the uptrend we break out of that level there could be more gains for Nvidia. So I'm going to wrap up the video here guys. If you enjoyed this video again it really supports me the channel in general. If you just hit that like button guys it takes one second just go down below hit that like button. I really do appreciate all of you guys that do that. If you're new to the channel feel free to subscribe. I make videos every single day sometimes two a day talking about stocks trading 
trend lines, all of these different things that we're seeing on the screen here, stock news, you know, investing tips, investing, um, you know, everything about investing and trading pretty much guys. And of course, some personal finance sprinkled in there as well, as well as entrepreneurship. So Again, I appreciate all you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know any thoughts, any concerns you guys have about this market. I would love to know. I'll catch you all in the next video. There's two links again down below, the free Discord, the free Facebook. Get in there. I'll see you all. Thanks for watching again. Have a good one.